In this video, I'm going to show you how to set up a static IP address on an Xbox Series X console. This is my second video on this topic. In my first video, I showed the process setting up the static IP address from within your router. I received some comments from people saying that their router did not support this function, so I thought I would make a video showing an alternate way of setting up a static IP address. First, you're going to open up your network settings and select advanced settings. Now we want to make note of everything listed under IPv4. We will need this information in the upcoming steps. Now you will select IP settings. From here we will select manual. We are now at the screen where we will enter our static IP address. The important question now is what IP address to enter into this screen. If we get this step wrong, we could end up with future IP conflicts on our network. We want to avoid this at all costs. Many videos suggest adding a hundred to your current IP address. This does not guarantee that your router may not try to assign this same IP address to another device. Should another device on your network end up with the same IP address, you will not be able to access the internet on your console. To avoid this conflict, we are going to choose an IP address that is outside of the range that our router automatically assigns to other devices. In order to find out what this range is, we are going to need to log into our router. You are going to want to complete the next step on either a PC or a Mac. It could also be done on a tablet, but is much easier done on a computer. Now that I'm on my computer, I'm going to want to open up my internet browser. From here, I will enter the gateway IP address that we noted from our console. I will accept the security warning. This is completely normal when logging into a router. I will now enter my login credentials that I set up when I initially set up my router. If you never changed your password, simply Google the brand of your router and look up the default password. On some routers, the default password may also be printed on the router itself. Now that I'm logged into my router's dashboard, I want to find a section called DHCP settings, or in some routers it may be called LAN settings. The only information I need from here is the starting and ending addresses of the DHCP range. In my case, that is 192.168.1.100 and 192.168.1.200. At this point, we can close out of our web browser and hop back over to our console. From here, we will enter an IP address that is on the same network as our router and outside of our router's DHCP range. By choosing an address outside of our router's DHCP range, we will avoid any future IP conflicts. In my case, I am choosing to use 192.168.1 20. Since this is outside of the DHCP range of my router, I know this is a safe choice. Now we will enter the subnet mask that we recorded from our other screen. It will most likely be 255.255.255.0. But not in all cases, so be sure to use whatever you had written down from before. Now we will enter our gateway IP address. This is the same address we used when we logged into our router. 
In my case, this is 192.168.1.1. Now we will enter the IP address of the DNS server of our choosing. At the end of this video, I will link to a video showing you how to find the best DNS server for your location. For this example, I am going to use Google's public DNS server, which is 8.8.8.8. .8 you can use this if you want to, but I would highly recommend checking out my other video where we show you how to find the best DNS server based on your location. Now we will enter our secondary DNS server. In my case, that is 8.8.4.4. .4. Again, feel free to use the DNS server of your choosing. From here, we can now see our static IP address information that we previously configured. From here, our setup is now complete. Please click on my featured video to learn all about finding the best DNS server based on your location. If you got value out of this video, please consider dropping a like.